it is. We'll be right back. The choice is yours. I wear a PFD because if I trip and fall overboard, I'm dead. I can't swim. Well, it doesn't matter, you know, if you're a, even if you're a strong swimmer. You get knocked unconscious and it's too late. I wear this PFD because I'm a mom, you know, and I have to set a good example. I can't expect my little ones to wear one if I don't. The PFD is perhaps the most important item that you have aboard your vessel. It can take care of you whether you're conscious or unconscious. It's something that you can depend and rely on and you should never be without one. People wear life vests for different reasons, but life itself is the best reason. Most people who die in water accidents are not wearing life vests. 80% of boating accidents are caused by people falling overboard or boats colliding or capsizing. These are sudden, unexpected events that don't give people time to put on their life vests. Life vests, life jackets, life preservers, they're all personal flotation devices, or PFDs. They enable people to float in water. There are lots of different PFDs. Choose the right one for your situation. First of all, be sure that any personal flotation device you select is approved by the United States Coast Guard. Check the packaging and the label. The Coast Guard classifies PFDs in five categories. Type ones are large offshore life vests that are usually found on commercial vessels, cruise ships, or chartered boats. Type ones are designed for large bodies of water and will turn most unconscious victims upright. They have good performance, but are bulky. Type twos are near shore life vests and they're designed to be more comfortable, lighter, and less bulky than type ones. Like the type ones, they'll turn most people face up. Type three flotation aids can be more comfortable to wear and are probably the most popular PFDs. A type three is not designed to turn an unconscious person face up like the type two. It does, however, have the same amount of buoyancy or lift as a type two to keep a person's head out of the water. Type threes are designed for many different water sports. Water ski vests will provide protection from impact if you fall. This fisherman's vest has all the pockets you need to carry your fishing gear. A hunter's float coat will keep you warm on chilly mornings. But the best feature life jackets offer is flotation. Type 4 PFDs are designed to be thrown to someone who's fallen overboard. They're bad choices for poor or non-swimmers because they have to be grasped to be used. If you choose the Type 4 throwable, be sure you know how to use it. Always clutch the Type 4 to your chest so you can keep your head above water. Don't wear it on your back or it'll push your head under the water. Oh, a Type 4 PFD is okay to throw to someone in the water, but I wouldn't trust my life to it, not for a, an extended period of time. It just doesn't go. Type 5 PFDs are designed for special use. The Type 5 is usually not considered an approved PFD unless it's worn during the activity is approved for. There's a new kind of Type 5, a vest which is called a hybrid. I wear this hybrid because I'm more likely to wear it. It's cool, it's comfortable, it's easy to wear, it's safe. The hybrid is light and comfortable to wear, but it's a legal PFD only if you wear it. When the hybrid is not inflated, there's just enough buoyancy or lift to keep your head above water. If you're average size, that is. Some hybrids can be inflated by blowing into a tube. Others by pulling a cord to activate an inflation cartridge. And once the hybrid is inflated, it has even more buoyancy than most other PFDs. Boy, that water looks good out there. 
Keep in mind that the best PFD for you is not the best PFD for your kids. Some type 2s and 3s are designed specifically for children. This type 2 is best for kids who weigh less than 40 pounds, while this type 3 is approved for children over 30 pounds. That reminds me of my first boat trip with my grandson. Uh, as we were approaching our vessel, I was explaining the necessary things that we must do aboard a vessel. The first thing was that we must put on our life jackets, our PFDs. He didn't want it. He rejected it. So I said, if we don't wear it, back we go. So we started towards the car, got into the car, and his, his first action once in the car was to take and fasten his seatbelt. And this gave me the opportunity to compare the seatbelt with the wearing of a PFD. And I explained it to him in that sense, he accepted it. He said, OK, Gramps, let's go for a boat ride. Put on his PFD. We've been using them and enjoying them ever since. And remember, the best PFD in the world won't do you any good if it doesn't fit. Try this simple test to see if you have the right size. This one's fine. <laughs> Way too big. Sometimes what feels like a good fit when you're on dry land doesn't work so well in the water. The best way to be sure your PFD fits is to put it on and walk into shallow water. This PFD is too big. And this PFD is too small. Too big. Too small. Ah, just right. You know, how your PFD fits and how you wear it is very important. Be sure you pull the side strings until they're tight. Or snap all the buckles. People of different sizes and shapes may require different PFDs. Because of less body fat, a thin person will generally need a more buoyant vest than a heavier person. To find out how much buoyancy your body needs, test your PFD in shallow water. Storing your PFDs is also very important. When you're not wearing them, stow them in a cool, dry place. And don't pile anything on top of them. The weight might puncture or tear the vests. Something else you need to know. PFDs don't last forever. Check your PFDs. Make sure there aren't any rips or tears or any openings at the seams. Don't sit on them. And don't use them as a fender to protect your boat. They aren't made for that kind of abuse. If you have a kapok filled PFD, you can check its condition by giving it the squeeze test. If it collapses, like this, there's a leak. That means when the vest gets wet, water will seep inside. The water will cause the kapok material to decompose, which will cause the PFD to lose its buoyancy. The vest will become an anchor instead of a PFD. Remember, you can have the proper PFD and it may fit just right, and it may be in mint condition. But if you aren't wearing it, it won't do much good. Even strong swimmers should wear PFDs. Well, I, I wear a life vest now, but I didn't used to. I mean, I'm a lifeguard. I'm a strong swimmer. I just didn't think I had to. But one day I was out on a sail on a date with my girlfriend, and uh, we had a big lunch packed, and. You know, we stopped out in the bay for a little lunch, and well, after lunch, the winds picked up, and so we off we went. We're sailing along, and this little gust comes up, and we get knocked over. And I just didn't plan on my girlfriend getting hit in the head with a boom and going half unconscious. So uh, the next thing you know, strong me is putting her in a cross chest carry, and off we go. And I think all my training's coming in handy and everything. I'm gonna be the hero. And, well, about five minutes into the crawl, I developed the cr these cramps just, oh, man, I'm telling you, it was unbelievable. So I kind of panicked, and uh, I started swimming stronger, and it got worse. I got cramps in my legs, and, well, you know, needless to say, I just, I don't think I would have made it if a boat hadn't have come by. And, uh, you know, that taught me my lesson. So now I wear life vests all the time. When it comes to your life vest, you have lots of choices. Make sure you have the right one for what you're doing. 
and that it fits. The most important decision you have to make is to wear your PFD. Always wear your PFD. It's your friend for life. You've got to wear your PFD. Uh, it's not for yourself. Do it for your family. Don't take chances. Be prepared. No one plans on an emergency. You've got to wear a PFD because you'll never know when it will save your life. The choice is yours. Make the right one.